Rosie and Bill Show wish to thank our primary sponsors, The Mallon Agency, located in Springfield, PA, where they take pride in exceeding expectations every time. Anthony DiCecco and our friends at Tennis Addiction are ready to serve all your tennis needs at their beautiful facility in Exton, PA. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Rosie and Bill Show. The Sweet burst onto the music scene over 50 years ago, and their songs continue to resonate with generations of fans. Please welcome to the Rosie and Bill Show a man who is keeping the legacy of this iconic band alive, Richie Anori. Hi, Richie. Welcome to the show. Hey, 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 everybody. How you doing? <laughs> We're great. Yeah, Richie, we we are absolutely doing great, and we're so excited uh, to have you on. And we we just want we've got so many things we want to talk to you about. But before we do that, can you just like lift that shirt up a little bit so everybody can see that really cool shirt, that ballroom glitch <laughs> shirt you got going on? There we go. Oh, that has man. to be one of the coolest songs of all time. I mean, it's just it's just awesome. Yeah, that's for sure. It's uh, you know we just played a, a show in. Uh, in Minnesota uh, at the uh, Treasure Island. And it just is amazing to just see the reaction of that song and all the songs. I'm just proud to be part of the uh, the legacy and been with the band for so long, yes. That's where I kind of wanted to start with you, Richie. You just said you've been with the band for so long, but how did it get started for you? Like, what, how did you end up joining the band and what inspired you to be want, want to be part of it? Well, at the time I was playing with, uh, Keith Emerson from Emerson, Lake and Palmer. And I was working with a lot of different people. And uh, this guitarist that I knew, knew Steve, he was actually the first guitarist that we uh, played with, uh, Stuart Smith. And there was this, uh, in Hollywood, there was this, uh, uh, it was a charity event for um, Hurricane Katrina. Mm. So I was the, pretty much the drummer because I worked a lot with Howard Lees from Hard. He produced a lot of stuff. I was in a band called Heaven and Earth at the time as well, and he produced that band. And uh, I was working with Keith, and I was working with Howard Lees. And so through the evening, all these different players came for this fantastic you know, event. Uh, and so we played. And at the end of the night, Steve Priest got up, and I had learned you know, the, the Fox and the Run and some of these, a few of the songs of Sweet. And we played, and after the show, Steve came up to me and he says, "Wow, he says, you're you make me want to come out of retirement because Steve had pretty much retired. Uh, he was asked to join Andy Scott's version of Sweet, but that's something that he really was not crazy about doing. And when he heard me play, he I had the same in musician terms was called chops as uh, Mick Tucker, and uh, Mick Tucker." also studied Buddy Rich and Gene Krupa and these kind of styles. So you really had to, when you hear Mick play, it's 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 not just like Motley Crue kind of drumming or just straight rock drumming. It's it's some technical things. And so Steve heard that. And so we asked to, uh, you know, get together another time and things developed. And when it was time that he really felt uh, like it was really, he really wanted to represent the band the way he felt, uh, I got the call and he offered me, you know, a partnership in the whole, in the whole thing. So That's I couldn't awesome. <laughs> Yeah. What was it like for you to play in a band with Steve Priest? Uh, well, you know, I, just like I said, I've been playing all my life and I played with the greatest musicians on earth. And so, you know, when you, when you're with a Keith Emerson or you're with a, a Uli John Roth or a, from Scorpion, all these different people that I played with, I'm used to playing with really great, great players. And Steve was technically not all that, but he played what was necessary. Mm. And when he plays those hits, he's playing iconic parts down lower bass frets, not, you know, all the fancy stuff. He just knew how to play the pocket, as we put in musicians' terms. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, that that's pretty important. And clearly it, it it came through in those hits that you just talked about. Now, Richie, one other thing that I remember reading about was that when this venture was was launched with this version of the band, there was kind of a, a vision that Steve had and really staying true to, to those songs. And how, how important was it to maintain that 
and even to maintain that to this day. Well, Steve was, he's quite a man. And he always said that what he felt that we put together was a dangerous band. He wanted that same type of suite, that same energy live mm. where we just basically just rock the crowd in high energy. Well, it starts with the rhythm section. So that was important. And it also starts with the vocals and it starts with pretty much the whole thing as we put it in. And we swapped different singers out, but they've all been excellent. And all the guitars that we've been involved in have been all excellent. And so there has been a standard that we looked for that we, I feel that we've maintained and achieved continually and to this day, even better than ever. To what do you attribute the staying power of the, the songs and sound itself? Well, I attribute to, uh, you know, if you look at Chin and Chapman, who wrote a lot of the earlier stuff, and I think any good band, mostly, you know, making it is, is, is an interesting thing because they were almost, you know, they're bubblegum initially. Mm. So they had most, and a lot of these producers that almost had the next monkeys kind of in mind, that kind of thing. And from a commercial sense, you would think, okay, well, you know, that makes sense. But as it, they, then they realized when they might've had some session players here and there on their stuff, boy, these guys can play. And then it was like, oh boy, these guys can write. And boy, these guys can rock. And it's the chemistry and how it evolved in a short period of time. It was magic, you know, it just worked. And everybody realized that. And it's, that's why it's had staying power. These songs are just, what can you say? They were just, they were at the right place, right time, the right producers, all these forces come together just like the Beatles with George Martin, whatever it is, uh, you know, uh, Chapman was just an incredible producer and uh, Mike Chapman. And what can you say? So that's, that's what really had it. That was the combination. That's always the combination. It's always the chemistry. Right. Well, Richie, when you look out into the audience, when you're playing live, do you see the representation of all the generations? Well, you know, sometimes, yes. Like when we play Canada, where it's a funny thing with Sweet, because Sweet didn't tour America like they probably should have or wanted to. There was a lot of political things that happened. So people know the songs more than the name. <clears throat> so for the last 17 years since I joined the band, we've been trying to reverse that trend and really brand the name Sweet. Uh, so you have a situation where in Canada, it's a different story, just like overseas. They knew Sweet. So when we play up in Canada, the amazing, from gig to gig, sometimes you'll see all the multi-generations come out. And then sometimes you just have pretty much the baby boomers. And it's, a, it's, it's just a very, uh, you know, uh, older crowd, to put it politely. <laughs> Richie, how much has how much has the fact that you know songs like Ballroom Blitz that, that's on your shirt have been in movies like Wayne's World and other movies? I mean, how much of an impact has that had on bringing people's awareness, at least to the songs, if not the band? That's a good question because the the truth of the matter is that when you and that's what's so exciting about what we're doing now is because as the generations keep on coming up, just like when we were growing up. We were looking back to the blues. Eric Clapton was looking back to Muddy Waters. A lot of the youth realized there's something very special about classic rock. And what I do like about not being, um, almost were uh, underexposed in a way. You know, there's the, a lot of them are my friends, Sticks and Foreigner. And, oh, you know, I was in a band with Kelly Hansen, the singer from Foreigner. These guys have continued playing the U.S. for so many years. And now they're getting to the point. So it's almost like we're like the new kid on the block in a weird way. It's, it's, it's very strange and it, it serves us well. So when you're talking about movies and in the consciousness of Guardians, I represented a suite for the Guardians of the Galaxy too. We're on that record as well. And I was there for when a Stallone and everybody came out on stage. It was something else. Two Fox on the Run. Uh, and 
when you hear black phone, you know, that just came out and, and you're watching any TV show and then you hear these iconic hits, it adds to the, uh, the level of what these songs mean to, uh, to the listener out there. And then they do the research and they go, oh, okay, who is that anyways? So it's, it's in the stream of consciousness of, of, of America and the world. Yeah, it's an it's, it's incredible feeling to play those hits. So as a as a drummer, uh, you've played with the best of the best, as you said, and and you also talked about studying the greats that came before you. If you were to give advice for up and coming drummers now, is that something that you would tell them to do? Yeah, I mean, so many of the really great now you've got the Greg Bissonette who was with David Lee Roth and he's playing in Ringo's band. And so I think the kids really know you know, the Vinnie Calutas who played with Sting and all that, these guys are extensions and these are Dave Weckl and just uh, amazing drummers that are out there. But anybody that studies music and studies the legends, they go back to those earlier roots when they see Buddy Rich play in a big band or that. If, if you're really in it to win it, you, you, you listen to it all, you know, you really do. Richie, one thing I wanted to ask before uh, I want to get to some of the new music, but before we do, I had a question going back to something you said about, you know, there's been a few people have kind of come and gone with the band, but it, I can't help but think that there has to be a certain standard or a certain level that someone has to be able to play and sing at to be part of the band. Has that made it difficult in, in terms of any type of transition over the years to, to find the right person? Well, Kind of magical, actually. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, the band came together. Uh, it's funny because one of our bookers said, you know, every time we see you guys, you guys have always held up to a certain standard. It's just been amazing. So, you know, do we prefer maybe some other players to other players in the past? Uh, yeah, that can happen. But growing up in L.A., you're really in a hot spot for incredible musicians and there's a bit of luck that comes into it. Uh, like Mitch Perry, uh, he was our great guitarist. When we brought him into the band, Mitch was fen is phenomenal. I mean, Edgar Winter, Cher, on and on and on, his credits. And then he had some health issues. And then I had this celebrity jam that I did in North Hollywood. And uh, there was this guitarist named Jimmy Burkhard. And he would sit in and I went, where did this guy come from? You know, wow, this guy's like unbelievable. He looks like kind of like Steve Perry. I've met the Steve Perry, uh, Joe Perry from Aerosmith. He's got the image. He's got that look. Plus, he's like Brian May meets, I mean, he plays it all. This guy's incredible. So when it was time for uh, a replacement, it was just like, bang. <laughs> it was like perfect. Well, it's sure good that you pay attention, right? It makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And you do those kinds of shows. Do you have a favorite song that you like to play live? With the sweet, um, with sweet. Um, you know, I've been asked that question before. And I think the reason I've been in sweet for 17 years, and mostly we whittled down some songs that we used to play now everything in that set, I love to play. And each one is has its own energy. And it's like taking the people on it. What was great about Sweet, you know, it wasn't all just technical. It was about people having a good time. Damn, Teenage Rampage, bump, 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 bump. You know, it, it's, it's not just about the technical prowess. And that's what's great about Sweet is because you've got these songs that just people just love and they're anthems. And then you've got songs that people dance to. And it's like some music is just really aimed at like Michael Shanker and it for the guys, you know, sweet attracts women, which is good for me. No, I'm just <laughs> I was going to say, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Yeah. But I, I have to tell you, though, Richie, there, there was a time when I was younger that little Willie, there was times I liked it and times I didn't. But uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, besides that, let, let's get back to, the, I wanted to talk about the new music. So we understand that 
There's some new music in the works. There's actually been a couple of new songs that have come out over the last few years. So what can you tell us about the new stuff? Well, I, you know, basically, I, after you really get your, your music down, and I, I switched to playing guitar a lot. And I started singer, singing and songwriting and then getting into playing lead big time. And not that I'll do that in sweet, but I wanted to contribute. So started with Steve Priest with like System of Slaves. I started talking to him about this incredible concept I had for System of Slaves and wasted in Hollywood. So he was in the mix as we were starting, as he was ending his time here on planet Earth. But but it's exciting for me to be writing these songs, but also looking for songs by other songwriters so we can it fit in so we really can brand sweet into the 21st century the right way because we've been with it so long and bringing in, you know, instead of always catering to the old, you know, when you come to a sweet concert, you're going to be hearing new songs. So we just did, uh, we have a song called Little Miracle that we played at uh, Welsh, Minnesota at a, at a, about a 2000 seater. It was a big, big venue there. And we actually played it live and uh, Little Miracle. And by the end of the song, they were all singing it. Mm. And that's when you know you have something quite special when you, when you have the older fans all clapping and doing that. So, you know, that's what we want to do is, and then bring in the youth and radio play and, and really get them so when they come to a concert, they're getting best of all worlds. Well, that is a rare thing that you go to a concert of a great artist or a great band that has stood the test of time. And generally when they play new music, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, we got to sit through this till they get back to the other stuff. So the fact that you said people were actually singing along and engaged, that's a really big accomplishment. It was amazing. I got to tell you, Rosie. I mean, it was <laughs> amazing. We didn't expect that. And even, and our singer, he, it's funny, we weren't looking for somebody who looked like Brian Connolly. You know, Brian passed away in the late 90s, but he's got that Connolly look. And he is one of the best entertainers. When, I, when we got him in, but backtracking what we were talking about, how do you get those kind of players? There's, there's luck involved too, <laughs> you know, or something. Uh, because he just turned out to be the perfect guy for the band. And to see them react to that song, it was like, wow. But, you know, we have to really be conscious of, we want to stay in the ballpark of Sweet to con continue that. We don't want to stray off. But Sweet, the funny thing about the band is that they were so uh, diverse. I mean, that's the truth of the matter. A lot of, you know, you listen to some of the stuff, it's it's like funk. Uh, you hear a lot of the stuff, it's like, I mean, it, you know, total hard rock, you know, Iron Maiden plays Set Me Free. Uh, and then you've got the pop hits and that, that are like, almost like bubblegum. So it gives you an incredible, as an artist, it gives you a good broad stroke to be able to paint any which way you want to, to some degree. <laughs> Richie, was there ever, when you were growing up, like, how early did you get into music and was there ever anything else that you wanted to do? Uh, no, uh, I, I, you know, my mom was a, uh, a dancer. Uh, she got me into, you know, all the different types styles of dance and she was serious. She was a stage mom. So I started off in dance and uh, then of course you're growing up in the Beatles and stones and everything that's going on. You see Ed Sullivan and you're like, Oh my God. This is, you know, you hear the girl scream. That's enough for me. No, bad <laughs> comment there. Oh no. Well, anyways, but anyways, uh, no, because I came from this Italian family that loved music. Both parents were just totally into it, and my brother played guitar, and he was a teacher. And I started hitting pots and pans, and they're going, well, I guess this is what he's gonna do. So they got me my a little toy thing. I got a practice pad for a while which was totally boring, but I, I was like, I was mystified by music, yeah. So yeah, but you know, I've done a lot of things in my life and and it's it's about the music, but it's also about a lot of things in life. When you start raising a family, 
you, you know, and you have different uh, things and music is up down type of situation. It's not always steady. <clears throat> and you learn that, that uh, a lot of things play a part in your life as in business. It's called the music business for a reason. And if you want to play as long as I've been playing in this, you better think about the business. <laughs> no, that, that's a great point. And it's amazing how many times we hear that and how many people have said they wish they would have known some of the things they know now back then uh even some of the folks that have been doing this since the 60s so it, it is it is amazing that aspect of it richie now one thing i'm curious about is let's say on a personal note and then with the band any bucket list or to-do items that that have yet to be done for you either personally or in terms of the band well for me personally i have a nonprofit called people for new america i'm very much into creating um a better world and so I have a very, a lot of very big goals, uniting people through music. And so this is something I've been very, in a lot of music, I have 70 songs in the can that I haven't really released as a singer, songwriter, and artist. And I've got more reviews and, uh, but uh, my goals are, are lofty. I, you know, you have to keep on, you keep on envisioning how can you really contribute to society and to make our world a sane place to live in. And I notice you guys are very positive with you. I think you have your, 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 your slogan there, which I noticed. I say, Oh, that's cool. Because it takes all of us unifying together in a very crazy world. You know, 80% of us are pretty much sane in the world or, or put it in this way that, that are pretty good people, but 20% are not so. And so I believe that, uh, that music does bring, oh, I mean, this is such a coin phrase with so many musicians, you know, but to actually do something about it, and I'm not done. I'll, until my last breath, I will keep on working and going for those accomplishments to aim for achieving that kind of level. And uh, yeah, yeah, I've I've only just begun. <laughs> Love that, Richie. Thank you for for sharing that and for doing it, for caring enough, you know, People in the entertainment industry sometimes, because they have to, can become very self-involved, right? Because you really do have to kind of have that tunnel vision, put your hands to the plow. And it's nice that you're at a point in your life where you can look outside of the struggle or the, the quest to make it, right? To make a living doing what you love to do and now serve the higher good. So thank you for that. And thank you for, for acknowledging that because that's what it's all about. And that's what, as musicians, that's what we take responsibility for. So many artists, you know, uh, to be an artist and a musician, there's a bit of, you have to be selfish, you know, to a degree. Because any, I mean, Stevie Nicks, she never got married for a reason. She had her career and she knew that maybe that would affect her. And everything I've gone through in my life, but at the same time, you've got to look at all the dynamics and you look at really what's going on in the world. And, and we have to wake people up to the fact because people, are, you know, they're in apathy. A lot of people, they're depressed. They take drugs to try to put happy pills. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. As we play concerts and you see the excitement of the people and you're able to raise people up and see them smile, when we can take them out of the problems of life, and just for an hour or two to raise them up and then they can play that music or whatever music they're listening to. That just shows you the medicine of music. I agree. Music is really healing. That's what I was just going to say before you said that. So thank you so much. That is such an important ministry that you're a part of. So that's, that's wonderful. And Richie, my gosh, the time has gone so fast. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us for bringing more awareness to sweet and and you know we look forward to the new music coming out and the, we hope you come to the philadelphia area i hope so too and i'll tell you get ready for 2024 with sweet because we have a team together that is serious and the chemistry is this band is better than it's i mean it is off the charts so when you come to a sweet show get ready because it is it is a knockout show. So we hope to entertain everybody out there in internet land and and with you guys. We'd love to play for you guys and see you backstage and 
onward and upward, guys. Thank you for this interview. <laughs> We're there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm folks, getting one of those shirts too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. And again, thank you, Richie. And we'll see you next week. This week's episode has been brought to you by Doherty & Company Insurance Services for all your business and personal insurance needs. Our friends at Tennis Addiction in Exton, PA. And the Malin Agency, where exceeding expectations is how they do business. Interested in becoming a partner in positivity? Send us an email, Show 2018 at gmail.com.